I know we're going to get stopped because if you've ever tried to get into a racetrack here in the United States, uh, you're going to get stopped really, 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 really quickly. I own a foot solution store in Sandy Springs, Georgia, and we specialize in biomechanics. So we have shoes and sell shoes that are comfortable and good looking, but the thing that really makes us different is our training. We're all trained in the biomechanics of the foot and ankle and how that affects the rest of the body. So we can take a look at what kind of problems you're having and uh, come up with solutions to make you feel better. The most common problems that we see in people are plantar fasciitis or ball of foot pain or ankle pain, knee pain, hip pain. But when it comes to driving, there are some very specific problems that we have to address. The way I like to describe it, people, and people often ask, do we make the shoes? And no, we don't make shoes. But the way I like to present it is that we curate a collection. And when it comes down to what we do with shoes, we're all about comfort and the biomechanical side of things. We want to make sure that, you know, if you're in any pain or discomfort, we can help you to not be. You know, when it comes to, to doing anything, whether you're standing in a paddock, waiting to work on a car coming in off the track, or whether you're walking four miles, five miles that day at Petit Le Mans, wanting to, to have the most fun you possibly can up and down all those hills, you can feel a whole lot better having as much fun as possible because just sitting in one spot is not going to to give you the most of your for your money. When we go to a shoe show, we're looking at pretty much any brand of shoe is going to be at one of these shoe shows. The Atlanta shoe show, believe it or not, is actually the the largest independent footwear market in the country. And then Las Vegas has a really big shoe show. And then um, Milan is the world's biggest shoe show. And that's where I like to go also. So we do Atlanta and we go to Milan twice a year. In 2018, I decided I was gonna fly into Rome and then drive the six and a half hours up to Milan just for fun. In hindsight, a six and a half hour drive after a flight of, you know, nine hours that I didn't really sleep on might not have been the best choice. I was a little sleepy, but the drive was beautiful and wanted to do some car things along the way. I'd thought about going to Modena and, and different things, but was really too sleepy to add another three or four hours to the drive. So the next day after, because we always like to pad these trips with a few days to play, you know, Monza is only 40, 40 minutes or so from Milan. Well, just north of Milan. I guess you could measure it in roundabouts, probably about 100 roundabouts or 40 minutes to Milan. I just wanted to get a picture in front of the racetrack, you know, the sign or something just for fun and add it to the places I'd been, whether or not I'd driven it. The thing about Monza, and I, I guess I should have realized this, you know, you watch enough Formula One races and you see the beautiful helicopter shots as they come up and over the track. Monza's in a forest, in a park. So when we got there, we were on a gravel parking lot surrounded by trees. Couldn't see the racetrack anywhere. So I was a little disappointed. But I noticed that there was no gate at the guard shack, so I thought, we'll follow the road. We'll see when we get stopped. Because I know we're going to get stopped, because if you've ever tried to get into a racetrack here in the United States, uh, you're going to get stopped really, 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 really quickly. Well, as we, as we drove down and kept following the road through this beautiful forest, we come to an intersection, and at the top of it, there's a guy. There's a guy standing there, sort of flagging people, and we have realized there were a few cars going somewhere. So I was like, what do you want to do? I'm talking to my husband. I was like, what do you think we should do? He's like, well, we should definitely go. So we drive up the hill and we get there and the guys, you know, some, my Italian is lacking. As in, I speak very, very little Italian. Um, one might say no Italian. And he's like, uh, something in Italian. And I just looked at him and said, looking, he'd look. And, he just said something else in Italian and just pointed that way. And so I was like, okay, well, we'll go that way. So we're driving and I realized, okay, well, we're going through the tunnel. We are, okay, we're inside the track now. And we're driving around and come up and 
pull around and I'm like, oh, we are not supposed to be here. I know we're not supposed to be here. I don't know who's supposed to be here or what all these people are doing, but I know that we weren't invited. That didn't really stop us. <laughs> we found a place to park in the infield and looked around and on the way in, you're passing the old Parabolica piece of track that's there and you're going, oh my God, this is so cool. We're in, we're at Monza. And it turned out there was some sort of bicycle thing that was happening. There were people bicycling around the racetrack. And so we um, parked the car and saw an event happening sort of in the, the middle of the infield. I was like, well, we could just, we could just go right over here and, and take a picture of the track. And so through, the, through a fence, we were standing right outside of the, the track, took a picture. And you see some security people standing around looking real official, talking to one another. And I'm like, they are going to come over here and ask us what we are doing any second. And my husband, who's afraid of nothing, was like, well, let's go up in these stands. And I was like, this is a terrible idea, but, but okay. So we run up in the stands and we're looking out and turn around and we're like, you know, that gate, that gate over there is, is open. And why don't we see if, if we can get through that gate. We had to walk past two security looking people on the way there, but of course, this is Italy and, and no one cares about much of anything. So we're walking past these two guys. We just are looking like, no, we belong here. We're, we're totally supposed to be doing this. Walk through this gate and we're in the, the garages on the pit, uh, in the pits. And um, without skipping a beat, we didn't stop walking, walked straight through one of the garages and ended up in the pit lane at Monza. There was hardly anyone around and we just walked around up and down the pit lane and started to walk the track until it was apparent that we were almost the last people there. And we figured if we didn't leave now, as lucky as we had been not to get kicked out yet, we surely were going to be very soon. So we scurried back through the pits, got a few pictures, and I ended up buying this hat at a gift shop that was open. In America, if you showed up to Road Atlanta and you tried to go through that big chain link fence, someone, the police would be there in five seconds. Try to get in the infield at Atlanta Motor Speedway, they're not gonna let you do it. In Italy, you don't speak Italian, you don't speak Italian, he didn't speak any English, you say I'm here to look and they just point you to the, to the inside of the track. And I wasn't mad about it. We do have an account with Pilati. I haven't carried much Pilati in a while because it was, you know, when I found them at the shoe show, I was like, oh my gosh, I remember my first pair of Pilates. It was during the time we were doing Extreme Measures. And I was like, man, that would be really great. I'd love to carry those. And that's the problem sometimes when you go to a shoe show and you're looking around and you're like, oh, well, that looks great and that looks great. Sometimes nostalgia kicks in and it overrides all, all wisdom that one might otherwise use to decide where it'd be a good idea to spend your money. So we did a buy and brought in the Prototipo, Prototipo GT, a Spider, all the, the ones that I remember when I was younger. And uh, it was a little bit of a struggle selling them. A Couple of people knew the brand, they bought them. One of my favorites is a very good customer of ours. He came in and he picked up a pair of the red spiders and he said, what are these? And I said, well, you know, it's a driving shoe, got a rounded heel cup, you know, a little bit broader in the forefoot to help with that heel toe downshifting. He said, well, that's pretty cool. So he put a pair on, he, he ended up buying them. And uh, I said, you know, Mark, now you just need the car to go with it. I knew he was a Mercedes guy. He and his wife both have quite a few Mercedes. About two weeks later, he came back and he said, Brian, I got a car to go with him. Walked outside, it was the Mercedes AMG GT, uh, black with red interior to match the shoes. And I was just thinking, that must have been fun. <laughs> I need a car to go with my shoes. We'd like to thank Dream Car Exchange for supporting the VinWiki YouTube channel this month. DCX is an enthusiast marketplace with auctions for amazing cars happening now. We've got some awesome things planned with them over the next few weeks that I think you'll enjoy. So please stay tuned, but now browse on over to their site and see if your dream car is the next one across the block.